Podcast 22 is passion needed. Awaken the leader inside. Follow the path of leadership. Never give up. Never stop trying. Get up. Believe in yourself. Not every day is going to be easy, but you've got to challenge yourself. You need courage. Be ready. Stop waiting for it to happen. Go make it happen. Harness the power within. You are destined to be a leader. Follow the path of leadership. Awaken the leader inside. Podcast 22 is passion needed. Hey guys, welcome back to another podcast. My name is Dave Rubalcava and I'm here uh, from Awaken the Leader Inside. Just want to tell you guys, thank you guys for joining me. And guess what? Today I have a special, special guest. And so I, uh, I met him through Twitter. He's been, uh, I've, I've been, I've had the pleasure to watch his show evolve. And you know what? He's actually really helped me uh, evolve my show as well. But I really see a lot of parallels in what we're doing uh, when it comes to leadership. And so uh, I want to introduce uh, Dave Valentine uh, from the Surging Forward podcast. Uh, I, I, like I, I think I mentioned him on a podcast before. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I'm so excited for you to be here, Dave. Hey, thanks, Dave. It's, it's, uh, it's been a long time coming. You know, you and I have just <laughs> kind of been, we talk a lot on Twitter, but yeah. with you and I have been on the West Coast and East Coast thing here. It's a hour, couple hours difference there. So it, it's great to finally get together and chat a little bit. Yeah, you know what's really cool, Dave, is that, you know, even though we're in different fields, I'm in uh, retail and you're, you're dealing with the trades. And, mm-hmm. you know, I've seen all your experience. You have, you know, 30 years uh, in the field, and you've done all these amazing things, and you've had all these amazing projects. But the, the the thing that we still deal with is, we still have to be leaders, right? We still have people that we have to motivate and inspire. And the cool thing that I've really enjoyed about yours is that you're an instructor too, so you get to have that connection with with you know people that need that that type of leadership or need advice. And I'm sure it's kept you grounded and kept you focused. Um, but, you know, can you just share a little bit with our audience, a little bit about sure. your background? Uh, yeah, I, I came up in the trades. Um, I'm one of those kind of guys. Uh, I was actually, when I got out of high school, I was shooting for my electrical engineering degree. Oh, excuse me, fluttering words here. My electrical engineering degree. Um, and so, but we didn't have the money to go to college. Right. My dad was in the Navy and military. And so I went to Tidewater College, you know, community college, and, you know, did a couple things. But I had to go to work. And so I started in the trades. And lo and behold, today I work for an engineering firm as a, like an electrical engineering assistant, design consultant, and inspector, and I don't have a degree. Yeah. So it, 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 both of my kids, we, I put them both through college. Uh, they both have good degrees, teaching degree, and my son's computer science. Um, so I'm one of those kind of guys, education is very important, yep. uh, but it's not always through college. Mm-hmm. And some people say, why don't I go back and get it now? And it's like, well, I'm about 10 credits shy from getting my bachelor's, <laughs> but <laughs> yep. who has time? <laughs> hey, exactly. But hey, you're living proof. You had businesses, yeah. you've done all this stuff. You can yeah. find success, you know, it through is. the use of your leadership. So it is. Um, and. You know, so I, I've always been curious. So I, I don't think I've ever really asked you, like, why you started Surging Forward or the Surging Forward podcast. So I'm really curious to figure out how, like, where did that, <laughs> where did it stem from? How did wow. that, how did that come to? Uh, well, <clears throat> I've been an entrepreneur pretty much all my life. Um, and, you know, I have a, I have to start it with that because being an entrepreneur, for those of you who have had a business or, or strive to have that, you have that entrepreneur's heart. You better hope you have a very good wife because the <laughs> yeah. struggles that, that my poor wife has to go through yeah. for the past 35 years of marriage, it's been tough. But um, I've always had that drive. I've, I've always had that surging forward type of attitude. Um, and where that came about, I've been teaching uh, the apprenticeship program since about the year 2000. So it's been about 17 years. And it's funny because when I teach, I've always told people that I've been doing this for about 20 years. Well, now it's more like 32 years, so I've had to adjust my years. Um, but the teaching and the drive, it's, it's a constant teaching as far as showing people where they can go. And, right. and because I did, I came from nothing and worked my way up. I've had businesses, I've, I've lost businesses, and I've had good businesses that I've sold. 
And so my life has been more like the stock market. Okay, it's instead of most people just kind of climbing up, it's been like, bam, doing really good, boom, you know, okay, not so good. Um, and so it's been a constant thing. But throughout that, I've learned a lot. And I've seen a lot of other people have failures also. Right. But the surging forward, where that came from, my son, you know, he went to college and, and he does really great. He always had a, I always thought he was going to be an um, engineer. But he went into computer science, so technically he is an engineer. He's building computer programs. That's what he does. But he told me one time, he says, Dad, you know, you spend so much time teaching others, you're not doing anything for yourself. Yep. Because with teaching school, I'd mentor people on the side. We go to a coffee shop, and I just sit there and talk to one person at a time. So he's the one that gave me the inspiration about the podcast. And surging forward... That is just something I've always told my students. So when I was looking for the word of podcast, I asked, actually asked my students. I said, look, I'm going to do this podcast thing. And they're looking at me like, you're, you're too old to do a podcast. What are you talking about? You're going to do a podcast? And I said, yeah, I know what a podcast is. You know. And so I'm talking to the guys. And I said, I just want to figure out what to name it. And, and, of course, I was doing online courses at the time also. And so they said, hey, you know, you're always telling us to keep surging forward. And so that's, that's kind of where the term came from. And so, you know, it's and it's creating a positive view in a negative world because we get so bombarded. Right. You know, you, you can't even drive down the road and listen to the radio without hearing. Now, even if you're listening to music, half the music I listen to down is negative. Now, I, I listen to country music and I don't even like listening to country music anymore because <laughs> it's depressing. It's like, wow, where's, <laughs> where's the positive message here? You know, one or two is fine, but now it's just all the time. And we're bombarded with that. And right. so that's what I try to do is create that positive message, you know, whether no matter what it is, really. Yeah, you know, and what what I've loved about your podcast, and I think what really, you know, I think for me personally, what helped me connect to it is that I, I saw your passion in it. And and you know, I have a lot of passion for leadership. And when you see someone else that has passion, you know, it was like almost an instant connection. I was like, man, I, I, yeah. I love what your podcast is about. Because like I said, I see a lot of parallels. And leadership is universal. You, I mean, it, it, you can use it in any field. And it's still useful. What, you know, and I like to talk about some of the, the difficult times that we go through as well. Why do you think that it's so important that we have passion to overcome those, those hardships in our life? And how have well, you used that? Well, you have to have something you believe in. It, 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 you know, to have a passion, you cannot just expect somebody to do for you. Because um, one of the biggest things I teach with us, with, with some of my students, and as I've gone through life, um, very few people have done anything to help me out in my life. Um, I've had a few very good mentors, and those are the ones that really, you know, dug into me. Um, but they were all, a lot of them were at a young age. I mean, I can remember as a young teenager, you know, Herman Landere. I mean, the, the guy just, he told me that, hey, you know, believe in yourself. That's the only person who's going to make it. And it's not a self-centered belief. It's not a pride that, hey, I'm better than anybody else. But it's like, if you don't believe in yourself, it's hard for anybody else to believe in yourself. I mean, I get a lot of guys in my class who were down and out. They, you know, they claim they don't make enough money. They can't have this. They're they're living, you know, they got five kids at home and they don't have any income. And I'm like, well, you can make a difference, but you have to get out and do it. You're the one that has to surge forward. You can't expect me to always lift you up because I can lift you up for a moment, yeah. but I can't carry you through because I have a load in life too. Yep. And so... This is part of what it is. You know, it's that encouragement is that everybody has the same capacity, especially, you know, I know that our podcasts are going worldwide now and there's a lot of great countries out there. But the United States is still, as far as I'm concerned, one of the best countries for opportunity. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. And I've seen so many people. It doesn't matter where you are. I mean, I've seen guys without a high school education start a business and become millionaires. And they're doing great, you know? Absolutely. And so, yeah. So that's kind of where it's at on that. Well, you know, I I I love that, Dave. I mean, you're you're the hardest thing I think for me as a leader is to 
you know, because I have a lot of passion and I've been through hardships and I've had kind of fight for every inch of my career and, and <laughs> even, you know, even the podcast and all this stuff. I, I mean, I'm fighting for it, but you got to have that, that drive. And I think nothing is more frustrating when, you know, you have people that want to be successful, but they're lacking the drive and the commitment to get better at their craft or get better at. And I think I, I see that. I know you've, we've, we've talked and you've experienced the same thing where they want kind of that instant gratification, but you're going to have to, you're going to have to make sacrifices. And so exactly. I know along your journey, you know, through, <laughs> through growth and business and all this stuff, you've had to make, you have to make a lot of sacrifice too, right? So what kept you motivated through all of that? Like, how did you keep your motivation? Because I think it's so important for people, especially new leaders, to know it, you're, you're going to have setbacks, you're going to have failures, but oh, you yes, got to embrace definitely. that, right? You got to you got to learn to embrace that a failure does not define you as a leader. Absolutely, what happens that's, next defines you as a leader. Absolutely. So how did how did you get through some of that stuff? I know you talked about peaks and valleys, and and <laughs> that you know I'm sure you had a lot of difficulties. How did you get past that? How did you work through it? Well, I had a couple of mentors tell me, and I've passed it along to others. And one of the first things I tell people, my students in class, I tell them, number one, I'm going to be your best friend. And other times I'm going to be your worst enemy. Right. It's about, it's that passionate, you know what? Number one, I tell them, I can tell you a couple facts in life. You will fail. Life does stink. You will fall down. Right. But you have a choice. You have a God-given choice that it's built in us as human beings. You can make a choice to either stay down or get up. Now, if you choose to stay down, you're going to be hoping that somebody comes out and gives you a helping hand here and there. And that's great. I, I love charity. Don't get me wrong. I help out with a lot of stuff with charity. And there's nothing wrong with helping out. But the problem with that, when you're dependent on somebody helping you all the time, one person's going to get tired of helping. So now you got to find somebody else to help you. So you always got to keep yep. looking for that other person to help you. Yep. Whereas if you make the choice to help yourself, now your growth is unlimited. Right. Because there's nobody holding you back. And so that's what's important about it. You know, we have a choice. Life is hard. And and I and what I don't like about what they do a lot of time and even in the schools today, I get them in my class all the time. It's like they come in this class and here they're, you know, the word apprentice. They don't even know what that word means. You know, they come in as an apprentice and they're like, Well, good grief, I've been doing this trade for two years and you know, I'm only making ten bucks an hour. All right. Well, good yep. grief, dude. When I was your mate, I was making a dollar seventy-five an hour. So, you know, what difference does that make? You're doing pretty well. But yeah. it's just, you know, they're, they're ready to give up after two years. And they yeah. want what I have after 35 years. Right. Or they want what somebody else has. After, and then they don't see what I have. They don't realize how much I've gotten and lost, gotten and lost, you know. Yeah. But what drives, I guess to go back to the question, you have to have something you believe in, whether it's yourself. For me, it's always been my family. Because I had two kids when they were younger. That's what drove me. I mean, I, I would just go out and hit the pavement. And I never collected an unemployment check a day in my life. Uh, I've been laid off a few times. Yep. But with the first time you, I went to an unemployment place to go collect an unemployment check, and this is something that really drove me at a young age. I did. I got laid off in the middle of Chicago on Thanksgiving one time. Oh, two little kids. <laughs> That's, that's a tough, tough time. Yeah, that's so tough. So I went down the unemployment thing like everybody told me to do. I went down to go collect an unemployment check, and I stood in that line, and then I had to go in there for the next day and wait in the line again. Finally, I got my interview. And I can remember that to this day, the lady looked at me and said, I'm going to get, I forgot what it was. I was going to get like 180 bucks. I'm like, what? Is that it? Yeah, you'll get that every two weeks. What? And they said, it'll start in about a month. I said, what? And they said, I said, I'm going to have a job in a month. You know what that social worker looked at me and told me? Don't be so negative. You deserve this money. <laughs> I went, huh? <laughs> oh, I threw man. the papers at her desk. I walked out. You know, I never collected it. Yeah. I went pounding on doors, and I found a job in the middle of winter up in Chicago, which is unheard of. Yep. Not in the middle of winter because all the trades are dead. And this is back in the 80s when times was tough. You know, and I so would, I, <laughs> it's Dave, crazy. I, it's, you know, I, I, I love it because – 
It's about <laughs> will set. Like it I, is. I, you talk about, about that all the time. Yeah. I, I, it's, it's so difficult to teach, to teach will set. But if you have the will set to change your circumstance, nothing is going to get in your way. I mean, <laughs> when you have passion and you're con you know, committed to doing something, even if you don't know the end result, but you're committed, you have that, that intensity, nothing will get in your way. And right. it's just, it's, it's tough to, I, I'm sure you see it. I know I've seen it that people don't have that type of drive and and I, I have to be honest and say, this is why you're failing. Like it, it, not only in your career, but probably in life, you, you gotta have that drive. And if you don't know what's preventing you from, from having it, then you gotta figure it out really quickly, but you gotta have that drive because you will find success by simply using willpower, Absolutely. willpower, will set. Well, so, I mean. Well, leadership techniques have been around for a long time. I mean, I remember Zig Ziglar. I, I've read a lot of his books. And, yeah. I listen to the Zig Ziglar podcast, but even back in the early 1900s, it was like, if you can't take the huge step, take the biggest step you can take, All Right. but take a step, you know, it, it, you don't have to go from, you know, rags to riches overnight, but just go from rags to dollars, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, take like the it. biggest step you can take. And, and, and that's what it's about, you know. And, yes, there is sacrifices. Um, you know, I, I've had a lot of sacrifices I've had to do. I mean, I mean, good grief, it used to be um, that I, I didn't get to go to a lot of the places that my kids go. I remember my kids, I sent them down to Disney World, and I didn't go because I had to operate and do things and get the house going. I, yeah, go to yeah. Disneyland, have a good time. I had no desire to go. Now, with that said, they finally did get me to Disney World probably about three years ago. And I had a blast. Yeah, <laughs> I, that, that was a blast. And we're going again this year. So, that's but good. Um, that's good. You know, yeah, I sacrificed a lot of times. Now, again, I did stuff with my family. I did stuff with my kids. I had a, I have two great kids. Uh, they're grown now and they're, they're doing their thing and they're very successful in life. But it's because that's what I taught them. I taught them to drive. I mean, what? I mean, at a young age, <laughs> I mean, my son was doing jobs around the house, you know, and, and it was just the way it was. And so. He never got anything for free, but he worked hard. And I always taught him one of the things, when you do good things, good things happen. When you do, or when you do bad things, bad things will happen. Yeah. When you do good things, good things might happen. Yeah. I never told him they will. Yeah. Because there are no guarantees. Yep. And I think that's what we get caught up in life. But, you know, I'm not guaranteed to, you know, succeed in this podcast. I'm not guaranteed to succeed in my online business. Only thing I have a guarantee is, is what I choose to go out and do. Mm -hmm. That's the only guarantee I have. So, yeah. you know, that's what I try to bring on to people. Well, I think you, you had a good point about uh, leading by example, because I think that I, I have the same, same perception, you know, or same uh, outlook with my family. Like, I, I'm going to, it's great to tell people stuff, but when you lead by example, you know, and I'm sure your kids will know that story someday about what you had to do to protect your family and go out there. And the same thing with me. I think that is what is so important is you have to lead by example. And even in business, I mean, it's the same thing. You have to, you got to, you got to, you know, walk the walk. You can't just say, <laughs> say stuff. You got to go out there and lead by example. But I think it has such an enormous impact when people see your commitment they see what you're capable of doing they see how you overcome hardships uh that are happening to to you not only at a, in a family but even at work or whatever when you overcome obstacles like that you're sending a message that it can be done so i think that leading by example is so important in in people's development and people's growth but even in life and i think that's uh that's something that i admire and that i hold to my heart too is that i i don't know you know sometimes how i'm going to do it but i'm going to give it everything i have let's get and, in there and do it yeah, and we'll both yeah. help it out and i know it, my kids are watching and so that's yeah. so oh important. yes they they They're watch watching. more than you know um yeah <laughs> Believe That's me, sure. uh, I, my son will kill me, but I got to tell this story because yeah. I tell it to everybody. But even coming up, you know, I mean, he was a teenage boy, just like just like I was, just like anything else. Didn't clean his room, didn't do all this stuff. And, you know, come tromping through the house with shoes on and a carpet. And I'm like, what are you doing? 
look, this is my house, my rules. Ah, I don't like your rules, Dad. Guess what he did the first time he when he moved out on his own? I went over his house, had my cowboy boots on. I go walk in the door. He said, Dad, shoes off. I said, what are you talking about? He said, my house, my rules. So I'm like, okay, yeah, you're right. I mean, it was amazing uh, how it turned around, you know? Yep, I'm waiting um, for those moments those to years. come. But, yeah, it, it was amazing. But, again, it's just the leadership by example, it, it, it's so important because, let's be real, failure is going to happen, and like, we, we like to tuck things under a rug, and we don't like to deal with problems. Right. Problems have to be met head on because they're going to come. Um. We had technical difficulties when we were getting ready to start the show today. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, we, we have, you know, I get frustrated just like anybody else goes. And But yet, okay, we have to solve this. And it, it, there's a reason. And when your guys are out in the field, when they see you jump in to help solve it, instead of screaming at the guys that they're doing something wrong. And when I'm training other leaders, I do also a training seminar for leaders and training young guys. We have to be very careful about saying, hey, I'm going to give you this big promotion. And for me, an electrical, you could be the best electrician in the world. But then when I put you in a position of a foreman, all of a sudden you fail. Yep. Well, the reason being is because you don't know how to be a leader. Right. And so your guys, they have no respect for you. Yep. And so that's what's important, you know, of, of being able to have the guys work when you're not around, not just when you walk around the corner and they start working real hard. Yep. So I think we can do like five or six podcasts just on that topic alone. It's so <laughs> it's I mean, it's it's true. I mean, the way you carry yourself, the way you conduct yourself as a professional, um, it's gonna it set is. you up for Great. to be successful. Like it yeah. is. But you know, so I just want to get to one more thing, Dave, as we start to kind of wind down. So I know sure. you mentioned your mentor uh real briefly. How, who was your greatest influence um wow. to help you grow? Wow, the greatest influence. Well, I have to say, some of my greatest influence is actually probably about three. Uh, the one was Herman Landere, and the other one was Jay Kensler. And, and Jay was one of those guys that I worked my first job at. And he influenced me in such a way. And again, I got into construction at such a young age. And you know, I was making decent money. I was making two dollars and seventy-five cents an hour. It was a killer money back then, <laughs> <laughs> and my car and all that stuff. And and he goes, you know, all of a sudden he saw me working overtime a, a lot of time, and he'd always praise me how great I was. And what I did, I had actually quit high school, and I was working full time. And he looked right at me and he fired me. Oh, wow. And I said, well, wait a minute. You tell me how great I was doing. What what are you firing me for? He said, he don't hire high school dropouts. So I did. I went back to school, wow. which was the greatest thing that ever happened. Um, but he was one of my biggest influence because he did. He believed in me, but he goes, I don't hire quitters. I love you it. You know, you quit something, you're fired. Yep. That's it. And so that influenced me a lot. And I guess one of my other influencers is I went up and I, and I was constantly, this is up when I was in Chicago, an old brother of mine, Earl Goff, great guy. He had seven kids. He had his own business. And he probably doesn't realize how much he was an influence he was to me. But he really, I had my own business up there at the time. And he was very established. And I was just starting out. I was a young buck full of fire, you know. <laughs> I was taking every job I could find. I didn't have enough people to run the jobs. And so then I'd end up losing jobs and customers would get mad at me. Uh, but he would always influence me and encourage me. But he was just a straight shooter. And he always taught me, he said, Dave, you always want to maintain integrity. Don't lie. Don't right. cheat steal always tell the truth he said if the truth is going to cost you a million dollars you tell the truth and i was like wow yeah. and so i did you and i always did that by. yeah and it was and i've always told the truth a matter of fact even where i'm at now you'd be surprised at how many meetings that we have in certain ones of the board they don't want me in there because they really don't want to hear what i have to say because <laughs> they know but if there's something serious on the line guess what they call me in right. because they know that i'm going to say what needs to be said right. and you know, whether it's behind closed doors or whatever, but your integrity. And to me that goes a long way. So those three people have actually, it's not just one, it's those three people that have been a biggest influence on my career and my life. And they were, they influenced me at a young age, mm -hmm. but if I can go one step forward, there's a fourth one and it's not one particular person. And it's something I tell all my students, the most influential people in my life have been the bad leaders. 
Very true. Those are the most influential because I learn what not, not to do. Not to do. Exactly. I will listen to you. I, I will listen to you. I will respect your authority. As a matter of fact, I'll play by your rules. But what you're teaching me is the wrong way to treat people. And so I, I'm going to do completely the opposite when I treat my group and my team. Yep. Good so for you. Yep. That, that's, a, that's, that's a big one right there. Yeah. All right. You want to share a little bit about your website? We can find some more information about Surging Forward, uh, social media. Sure. Uh, the best place to reach me, uh, actually, I've gotten real big in Facebook right now. Um, I, I, I've gotten the channel with uh, the Facebook and uh, Surging Forward. You just look up Surging Forward on Facebook. I'm even playing games with the hashtags, and it, it's all over the place now. It's kind of neat because I can go hashtag Surging Forward and go, wow, that's all me. Yeah. <laughs> but Surging Forward on Facebook, uh, www.surgingforward.com. That's my actual site where I do provide uh, code update courses for, you know, if you know anybody that's in the trades and they need to have, you know, they have their license, we do all the certifications for their licenses for their upgrades. Uh, we have all the courses available and we just went nationwide about three months ago. Wow. So nice. we're actually nationwide for everybody, anybody in the trades now that needs to renew their license. We have that. And my podcast website is the surgingforwardpodcast.com. And so that's where you can find the podcast episodes. And of course, we are on iTunes, uh, Surging Forward Podcast. And I actually have it, and I don't know if you've seen it or not. I actually did a YouTube video on how to do a podcast or how to listen to a podcast. I'll take that back. Yeah. So I have a YouTube channel up there also. And, you know, I've listened to David's quite a bit also, but I'm starting to do a couple how to videos. So we also have a YouTube channel, uh, Surging Forward. So yeah. you can check out some of the videos there. and. You know, those of you who have friends that don't know how to do a podcast, yeah, there's an easy one right there where you could say, hey, here's how you listen to a podcast. So I go through the whole screenshot and everything there. So that was kind of cool. Yeah. But, I'll uh, make, yeah, I'll so that's sure about we, it. Yeah, we'll make sure we get all the links on, on the info and, and so that, that way they have, you know, quick access to your website. But I just want to tell you, Dave, it's been a pleasure. You know, it's been, a, what, a couple months yeah. in the making. Pleasure's been probably. mine. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> of us uh, getting together. But, uh, you know, I appreciate your time. Like I said, watching your show grow has been really cool. I, I listen to you on a weekly basis, you know, and I'm driving to work. And so watching you evolve uh, on the show, it's been, it's been amazing. It's been pretty cool. And to know that I, I, I was there in the beginning. I listened in the beginning. So, well, so um, was I. I'm in the beginning of years. And, you know, one of these days I think it would be really cool. I don't know. When both of us get to be big and famous, get together and just do a video together. That would yeah. be awesome. <laughs> One of these days we'll hook cool. up halfway across the country and do a big video or something together. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> All right, so. guys. Well, I just want to tell you thank you, Dave. And, uh, you know, as we're getting ready to close, just always I want to leave you with one thought. Passion is so important for your success. You got to have passion. You got to find the will set to change your stars. And it's never going to be easy. It's going to be a battle. It's going to be a challenge. The faster that you accept that you're going to have to overcome hurdles, the faster that you're going to get to finding success and finding a way to use your passion to drive that success. So I appreciate it, guys. And tune in to the next episode. And we'll talk to you soon. Always remember, awaken the awaken leader inside. The leader inside. There we go. All right. All right. Have a good one, Dave. Cool.